Hello and welcome to the Sony Pro Show q and I'm James Leach and I'm joined today by Robbie Fleming. We are going to be answering some of the questions that you've posted following the Sony Pro Show episode 3. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at the show, check it out on the Sony Professional YouTube channel. First of all, Robbie, thanks for joining me. One of the questions that was posted was about maintaining the quality of output when shooting at high frame rates, um, which I guess is a bit more of a generic question for Yes. Across Sony cameras. Yeah, it really comes down to the sensor. Okay. So it's how quick the sensor can actually offload that information okay. and actually keep the quality to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so it really comes down to the individual camera. Right, okay. And then more on the Z90, we had a load of questions about shooting slow mo or slow and quick RS and Q mode using the Z90 because we showed some of that in episode three with. Uh, with Jono on the snowboard film, yep. where he's shooting a lot of slow mo um, in the snow, which is really great. But what are the options of the of the Z90? Okay, first, what what we've done, and if you look in this slide now, you'll see that what we've integrated is we've integrated some of the slow mo we're seeing in the 150, mm -hmm. and also in the FS5 as well. Okay. Yep. So therefore, we're actually trying to integrate both of those, and we can do that because the the Z90 has uh, a brand new sensor that actually allows us yep. um, to be a lot faster and actually pull the picture off. So we can actually do on a um, S and Q mode, we can actually then do from one frame all the way up to 100 in HD. Mm -hmm. So um, you can decide exactly what the frame rate is going to be and actually shoot in that. And, and then we also then go in a super slow-mo, we then go all the way from 100 up to 240. And then we will also then jump again uh, all the way up to 1000. Mm -hmm. Now, image quality does change a little bit yeah. there. If, if we actually do up from 1 all the way up to 240, mm -hmm. we are um, pixel binning the 4K sensor down to HD, mm -hmm. but that's actually given us the best quality. So uh, the quality that is, is going to be absolutely immaculate. As we go past the frame rates, we do have to sort of do um, sort of reducing the lines and some of the actual resolution to get the best we can. But what we do, we, we try and optimise that the best we can to give you the best image quality. Okay. So as you can see from the thousand frame images of the snowboard, the actual quality is actually, actually very good. Okay, and um, is there some continuous recording or cache recording with those modes? Yeah, so normally what would happen within within the one to 100 frames is actually in real time, okay. and actually going straight to the card, yeah. and, and the rest then is cached which, as it does with the uh, FS5. Okay, understood. Okay, next question we had was about capability of the Z uh, 90 recording intra, so iframe, 422 10-bit um, for the higher quality. Um, is this possible in the Z90? As it, all, it comes down to two things really. So it comes down to price points. So if we actually look at what camera does that, mm -hmm. we're talking about the FS7. Okay. Because the FS7 will give us the ability to do 4K 10-bit yep. in that. But it's also 600 megabits per second. Yes. So therefore it's very fast. Yeah. And what we need for that is actually the ability to have the right media to do that. Mm -hmm. So we do that in the XQD card, yeah. and also in our higher end cameras, say on, on the new 280 that's coming out, yeah. that's actually done in an S S by S S S S card. So we know that that media can handle it. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at the, the Z90, we actually are using SD, SD card, yeah. and the maximum we can go in is 150 megabits per second. Right, okay. So down to really the recording media, speed of the camera, etc. Really? Yeah. yeah. So there's a big interest around ND at the moment, what ND does the Z90 have? The, the great thing about the X70 and the Z90 is it actually does have, and show on the back of here, it does have a, a switch on the back here for ND, so we can go to clear and we have then three different selections to do it. It, it is a hardware uh, screen that goes over the top of it, yes. um, so therefore it's actually very good. So it does give us the ability to use this in any light. So if it's really bright, we mm -hmm. can actually lift the ND up, okay. so therefore we can actually use it in almost any, any situations. Okay, so really adaptable camera then for different shooting conditions. Absolutely. And ND in the other Sony cameras is slightly different because we have electronic variable ND in certain higher models, right? Yeah, we do, and um, we've even got a, a different method in the new Venice as well. But uh, the variable ND is actually, we've started to push out in our FS5 and FS7, yeah. and actually our new cameras coming Z280, out on the... 80 190, yes. Correct. Um, and that works on the basis that it has an, an LCD that drops down over the sensor, mm -hmm. and then that gives us a, a, a graduated um, ND filter from 1 all the way up to 128. Okay. Stops as such. Yes. And so therefore you can grade that between that either by using it, doing it manually adjust yep. or but also you can put it into an auto function mm. where it actually um, it will keep the iris um, 
open mm -hmm. and then adjust the ND relative to what you want. So you're keeping your depth of field. Great. Thank you very much for your time today, Robbie. Really appreciate it. No if you'd like to find out more, please visit pro.sony website and sign up to my Sony Professional YouTube channel. See you again soon.